Hey guys, thanks for checking out our channel. Today we're going to look at Baldur's Gate 3, the wizard class. More specifically, we're going to talk about the different spells that they have access to, starting off with cantrips. But before we get into that, click the like, subscribe, and the notification bell down below. That way you can keep up with all the stuff that we're doing on this channel. So starting off with cantrips, what is a cantrip? Cantrip is a spell that can be cast at will with no preparation or spell slot needed. Uh, think of these as the wizard's version of the sword. Fighters, every round they can attack with a sword. For a wizard, these are the same thing. You have access to different spells that you can always cast, you never run out, and so long as you're not in a silenced area or anti-magic zone, you can just cast them once per turn, like clockwork. The first one up is Acid Splash. It's a conjuration cantrip. You hurl a bubble of acid that deals 1d6 acid to each creature it hits. What the 1d6 means for those who don't actually play tabletop Dungeons and Dragons is going to deal a minimum of 1 damage, a maximum of 6 damage, unless there's some sort of modifier that adds or subtracts to it, or if you manage to roll a critical. Now, the nice thing about Acid Splash is that it has a 2 meter explode radius, so it's going to hit all enemies in a small area. It's not a very Big spell, but you can get two or three enemies if they're close to each other pretty easily. Normally, I'm not going to have access to the spell. I don't typically memorize it, but if I have a scroll for it, or if there's just a situation that calls for it, I would go back and memorize this spell for the combat. Next one is Blade Ward. This is an abjuration cantrip. The thing about abjuration spells, you have to understand, is they are typically defensive spells. So they're going to provide damage protection, spell protection, or possibly add more hit points to your characters. Blade Ward, you gain resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from weapon attacks. What resistance is, is that it's going to have the amount of damage you're taking from any of these attacks. So if a bludgeoning weapon hits you for 10, you're going to take 5. Normally I'm not going to have access to the spell either. It's not worth memorizing. Uh, there might be situations where it's pertinent to have it. If you're trying to cover a large distance while people are shooting arrows at you, it could be useful to have it. Uh, or even against uh, arrow traps, certain other situations. Chill touch necromancy cantrip. Everybody loves necromancy. Uh, it deals 1d8 necrotic damage and the target cannot regain hit points. That's the big kicker about this spell. Normally I'm not going to use this, but if you are in a fight where the enemy is regenerating or has a cleric that's constantly healing, say, the fighter, it might be worth hitting that fighter with a chill touch so that they can't gain hit points back for a couple of rounds. Might be all you need to kill them. Uh, the other benefit to chill touch is that undead creatures also get disadvantage on attack rolls. Uh, this can be important if you're fighting a whole bunch of undead or even just one particularly powerful undead. You know, target them with it, and for a couple of rounds, it makes it more difficult for them to hit you. Firebolt. This one is a keeper. This is one of the spells you will cast often, at low levels especially. It deals 1d6 fire damage and creates a flammable surface. It's that flammable surface that matters. So when you first hit somebody with this spell, they're going to take a little bit of fire damage, and then they're going to take a little extra fire damage because they're standing in a fire. I know I've said fire a whole lot here. So, hey bro, I hear you like fire, so I got some fire to go with your fire. Uh, it is a fairly useful spell. I use it a lot. Uh, always remember though, if you firebolt somebody and it leaves the ground on fire, if you run through it with your own dudes, they will also take damage. One other important piece of information to remember with the firebolt spell is that certain things such as explosive barrels, uh, gases, and so forth, are also flammable. So you could toss a single firebolt into a whole bunch of barrels of gunpowder, and next thing you know, you have a massive, massive explosion that kills every single goblin in the camp. But I wouldn't know anything about that, and I definitely don't suggest you try it. And if you do, when you do, make sure you're a long ways away. Thanks, firebolt. I love you. The friend spell. No, no, this is not the 90s sitcom with, uh, what was her name, Phoebe and uh, uh, the pro wrestling guy, David Arquette. No, this is a enchantment cantrip. 
what it is is there will be a lot of situations where you're having to talk to NPCs and you might want them to get on board with whatever crazy plan you've come up with. So the easiest way to do that is to convince them. And having the friend spell active doubles those chances effectively of making that work. Um, definitely a useful spell, but not something I would normally keep in memory. Uh, it's nice if you can get a scroll of it, or maybe just backtrack, reload a save, and memorize friends just in time for that conversation. It can definitely save you a whole lot of hassle and a whole lot of reloads. Light spell. This is a wonderful spell. Always memorize the spell. Always have the spell active when you go into fights at night. There are going to be a number of your characters who do not have dark vision, and they will get into combat in areas that they just can't see well, and they'll miss all of their attacks because there's no light in there. As your wizard, just cast light spell at the beginning of a combat if it's dark, and hopefully everybody will stay in range of it and they can see just fine. This will increase your chances of winning combat tremendously. Mage Hand. This spell was mostly garbage in Tabletop Dungeons and & Dragons, and that hasn't really changed a whole lot in this game. Baldur's Gate 3 tries to do something with Mage Hand, but thus far, at least in the beta version, it hasn't been able to make great usage of it. Uh, it creates a physical hand that you can move around just like one of your other characters, and it can do attacks for a whole whopping one point of damage. Uh, the only real benefit to having Mage Hand, there might be situations where you need to pull a lever to avoid traps, and it's out of your reach. Um, or possibly steal books of necromancy. You know, maybe that's a thing, I, I don't know. Uh, the biggest problem with Mage Hand, it, it's not going to be a combat useful spell, and it requires concentration. So if you have a spell with concentration already active, such as Mage Hand, and then you go and cast, say, True Strike, which you should never do because True Strike is absolute and utter garbage, and it's a complete and utter dumpster fire. Um, but if you cast True Strike, it would then cancel the previous spell with Concentration. So you can see the border's outlined. I'm going to go ahead and click it to unlearn that spell, because Mage Hand is garbage. Moving on. Next one up is Minor Illusion. Create an illusory image that distracts nearby creatures, compelling them to investigate. Not something I typically use, but there are absolutely ways this could be very useful. Uh, you might get into a situation where you think a fight's going to be very difficult. You're going to have to fight 12 guys at the same time. If you can hide outside of a combat range, cast Minor Illusion, and maybe distract a few of them, get them to come investigate, you might be able to kill a couple of those guys before you ever get into the big combat. Once again, not something super, super useful, but I have the feeling that if used well, it could be incredibly, incredibly effective. Moving on. Poison Spray. Looks like it should be good. 1d12 damage. Hey, for a cantrip, that's really big damage. The problem is that it's 3 meter range, so very, very short range, and 2, it has a constitution saving throw. This damage is all or nothing. If they make that saving throw, they take no damage. And they will make that saving throw because it's constitution and everything in this game has high constitution. Plain and simple. Uh, even in regular tabletop Dungeons & Dragons, Nobody likes Poison Spray. Ray of Frost. This one, just like your Fire Bolt spell, is going to be used a lot. Ray of Frost is fantastic. This is the pinnacle of what cantrips should be. So you deal 1d8 cold damage and reduce the target speed to 3 meters. Uh, that 3 meters is about a third of a normal character's movement, which is somewhat useful. Uh, 1d8 that's pretty decent damage for a cantrip. The big kicker, and they don't actually tell you this in the description, is that it creates a zone of frost. So if you hit the target, just like the fire bolt creates an area of fire, this will create an area of ice. So whoever you attack with this spell has a chance to slip and fall, making them prone. Prone creatures are much easier to hit with melee attacks. So you cast Ray of Frost at that ogre, he slips and falls, you then run in with your fighter and your rogue, and kill the guy pretty quickly. Rather nice spell. Use it a lot. Shocking Grasp. Lightning damage, 1d8, which is pretty decent damage for a cantrip. And the big kicker to this one is it prevents the target from taking reactions. 
So what a reaction is, is in this game is when you move out of combat, a lot of times they can use a reaction to swing at you, make an attack against you, and sometimes accidentally kill your wizard. With Shocking Grasp, you can cast it on them, and if it hits, you can then just run away from them. They can't do anything about it. Big kicker about Shocking Grasp is that it's a range of 1.5 meters, so always keep that in mind. They pretty much have to be in melee range for you to use it on them. But I do like Shocking Grasp. It is a good spell. If you have extra spell slots, uh, once you are looking for more things besides just Ray of Frost, Firebolt, and Light spell, then Shock and Grasp is a good choice. Last one, True Strike. True Strike is utter and complete garbage. Don't ever memorize it. Matter of fact, if you can just delete the spell from your spellbook, do so. Uh, you'll probably be better off for it. Uh, just because I'm required to, I will explain what it does. It divines a character's defenses to give you advantage on attack rolls against it. So, if your fighter is having problems hitting the target, still don't cast True Strike on them. Just give them a light spell instead. Anyway, hope you enjoyed listening, and see you next time.